my friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Thursday and I am posting because I have some pickups that I want to talk about, some movies that I have watched and I want to review. And let's begin. Let me just tell you how difficult it is to be able to record with a family in general, period, with all the noise and everywhere. It's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's crazy. So taking this minute. I breathe and I'm gonna tell you about some pickups that I have. Four movies and hopefully four four movies and hopefully you can help me um with some of these. I'm having a little I had a little difficulty with few and some of them might be your favorites and some of them might not. Let's see what we have here. All right, first one I want to talk about is Like Father, Like Son. Okay, now this was an 80s movie. 80s 80s, am I right? Uh, uh, it'd be nice if they told you, like, right on the back of these things. It was, yes, this was an 80s movie. Let me see if they, uh, this is one of those uh, Mill Creeks. So they put the original artwork on the inside, and you have the cool case that looks like a VCR or VHS tape from back in the day. And it has the cool little stickers on it, staff pick comedy like you would have seen if you were walking into like a blockbuster video or a um, west coast video or a showtime video or a nap video so i think i always think that these are really really cool now this movie is a really really good movie this was um stars um let me see okay dudley moore and kurt cameron this was like right after kurt cameron had just done growing pains or, or during the growing pains time and dudley moore was a semi big actor that was starting to go a little bit downhill. He had done Arthur, um, Arthur Two. What else has he done? He did a, f a few movies. I think Best Defense with uh, Eddie Murphy, but uh, he's a funny actor. Okay. Um, and what happens is is him and his son uh, kind of go at it, and it's one of these movies where they they decide they're gonna switch places, and they're like, oh. Uh, I wish I was you, and I wish I was you, and they switch places, and they realize how difficult it is to be each other. You know, it's one of those things, and, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, there's been many times in my life where I wish, I wish that I could switch places with my kids, because I'll tell you right now, they complain about things, they're like, oh, you know, I don't know what it feels like to go to school, or you don't know what it feels like to, to get up and have to do something else, you know what I mean, you don't know what it feels like to have to pay bills, you don't know what it feels like to have to go to work, you don't know what it feels like to, to you know, make a car payment, you don't know, you don't know what it feels like about a lot of things, you know what I mean, plus, you know, what gets me is, I, lo I love these movies because they kind of bring you back, bring you back to your, like, your high school, you know, you like, you think about high school, you know, the funny thing is when you, when you're younger and you're in high school, now, now, I'm not a hypocrite. I can, I can bring myself back in time, and I can think about all of these things of when I was in high school and the things that I went through. I remember there was the bullies, and you had the jocks, and you had had the girls that you you, you had a thing for, but you were never gonna get them. You know what I mean? And then you had the girls that you didn't have a thing for, and they could you could easily get them, but you didn't want nothing to do with them. I, I remember all of these things, and I remember all I, I remember everything. And my kids come home and they're like, you don't know what I'm going through in school. Uh, it's so difficult. You, you don't know how difficult math is nowadays. Well, math really hasn't changed. It was difficult for me. Uh, it's difficult for you. It's probably going to be difficult for the next generation, the generation after that. And, and you're going to have your favorite subject. Mine's at the time was science. And if I go back and do science now, it ain't my thing. You know what I mean? So it's you know it's it's life and you know and, and movies like this i think are really cool because uh for like freaky friday and stuff like that you try to put yourself in the character and you're like yeah i would love to switch places with my kids right now i would love to go back to high school and do drama and and, and be in musicals and and play football and play basketball and, and hang around my friends again i would love to be able to go back when, you, when you're younger and you're in the middle of it you're like this sucks wow this is this is terrible you know i I, I hate getting up in the morning and going to this place and and having these teachers all over me and asking me this and asking me that. I'm tired and I don't want you know maybe school wouldn't be so bad if they started later in the day. You know maybe if it if it was like started at like maybe two o'clock and only went on from like maybe two to six that would that, that, that would probably be a, a good idea for school. But you know even now with COVID they're, they're home. My my daughter's uh, school consists of getting up in the morning, punching in. I'm here. And then going back to sleep, and then an hour later punching in, I'm here, and going back to sleep, and then maybe going to a Zoom class or two throughout the course of the day. 
Uh, same thing with my son. He's you, you got to be there for these Zoom classes. They literally hit the button, and and then you know they they're watching them, and then they're getting up and they're they're making a sandwich, and then and then they're they're back and watching them again, and then they're 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 outside doing whatever, and then they're back in the house again, and it, it, it's it's crazy. And then they watch a TV, and I'm like, what are you doing? You watch you're in school. Oh well, I I don't have to be back in class from here to here. And I'm like, okay, well, what are you doing? You know, it's like, oh, they'll go to sleep. Can you imagine what what wow complaining about getting up punching in for class and then you you go to class for for like an hour and then go to sleep for for two hours and then getting up again and then going to class again and going to sleep for another hour and then what are you complaining about but anyway so that's what this movie's about it's a father and son going at it i wish i had your life oh, i wish i had your life i wish my life was better than yours and and i'm going through all these struggles of teen years and going through high school and everything he's like oh yeah well you try dealing with, with work and my life and and relationships and everything at my age you know and your, your mother left and, and all that stuff and then they switch places and they realize how difficult the struggle is great great movie um there's another movie called vice versa with um okay i'm gonna uh one the years fred savage and uh, Judge Reinhold, which is, I think, even better than this one. Um, but that's for another another review. But, like, Father Like Son, it was one of my pickups. Really excited. Mill Creek, now available. Check it out. Maybe it'll bring you back to that time. And then you'll look at your kids and you'll go, like, why? Why are you complaining? What are you complaining about? You mean, oh, I'm having difficulties with my Zoom call. Oh, my computer's not turning on properly today. Oh, it's the end of the world. It's like, yeah, okay, well, when I went to school... I had kids kicking me in the ribs, you know, the chances of that happen, every once in a while I should go in the living room and, and bully them for a while, I should bully my kids and, and like, make them feel like they're right at home in school, you know, maybe, maybe I could do something like that, or maybe, uh, uh, I mean, they're, they're late to class, how can you be late to class if you're at home, I don't, I don't understand that, I get phone calls, oh, your child did not arrive to school today on time, how did he not arrive to school on time, they, they, all they literally have to do is roll out of bed and hit here, confusing i don't know but this movie you want to bring it back make you think about it and realize that kids just complain about things that later on in life they're gonna wish they had those problems that that's the bottom line of high school years in general you know i wish i could go back to high school and have the problems i had in high school honestly because they're getting older and i got i got i got one that already graduated i got two that already graduated two that already graduated and i have um one that's going to be graduating and another one that's going to graduate eventually i hope and they're gonna complain about the same thing and then they're gonna hit like their 30s and they're gonna go back and look at it and they're gonna be like i miss drama i miss football i miss my friends i miss i miss missing class i miss running to classes in the hall and i miss that you know i miss you know what I, miss? I miss the most looking for my books in my lockers i had multiple lockers and I had, I had a, a, a regular locker, a shop locker. I kept books in my friends' lockers because I never wanted to carry any books. And and I, to this day, I wake up in, in a sweat at night. And I'm like, where is my history book? What locker did I leave it in today? Because, you know, if you show up to class without the book, the teacher's going to be all over you. So this happened to me. It used to happen to me all the time. So I'd be like, was it in his locker? Is it in her locker? Is it in my shop locker? Is it in my, my shop tech locker? Is it my my regular? Where is this book? I don't know what his book is. And I carried a backpack, too. In the backpack was notebooks where I used to write stuff in, but it wasn't had anything to do with school. It's just I used to like to write rhymes and poems and, and rap songs and rock songs. And I, that's what I had in my backpack. No books. The books were in, uh, sc scattered about throughout the school. And it was a pretty big side, a big school, so it was scattered some on this side. And I tried to keep them next to where the class was because I'm like, okay, well, if history's over here, I'm going to go over there to go get the book. I, that's what I miss. I miss. I, I wait, still wake up thinking I'm either late to school or I wake up wondering where this book is. Where where did I leave it? Is it? I mean, I'm literally. I mean, back in the day, we didn't have uh, cell phones like the kids had. We had pages. That's what we had. That was a that was a big the big thing. We all had pages. So, but the thing is, you had to find the phone in order to make the page. So even if I could find the phone, I'd have to page the person that I was hanging around with to find out where the backpack was. It was a big ordeal. But I still wake up to this day thinking about this stuff so my kids are gonna look back and if your kids and everybody's kids are gonna look back i'm telling you right now and they're gonna look back at high school and be like i wish i was there again i i wish i had that to complain about i i wish that my biggest complaints in life were 
I'm not happy with math. I'm not happy with history. I'm not happy with science. I'm struggling with this. Struggling with a class. My, my, my thing as I got older was grades just lead to other grades. So, you know, you fail, you pass. You fail, you pass. You know, it's like you, you just try your best. And that's the way I, I, that's the way I raise my kids. So I'm, I'm not hot on them. I know what it was like. I remember what it was like. Like I said, I'm far from being a hypocrite, I know what it was like to be in high school. I know what it was like to struggle with math and history and science and stuff like that. I don't give you a hard time. Just try your best. But it's so over the top. So anyway, like father, like son. That was my little uh, rant on my my kids. Anyway, uh, next movie. Okay, this was a pickup. Never heard anything about it. Um, I like the title. It was another Mill Creek. I like the cover. Uh, and it's called Blind Fury. So I'm guessing after looking at the, the cover art and it says uh, he may be blind, but he don't need a, no dog. But he don't need no Is that even? But he don't need no dog. Okay. Maybe I'm saying it's wrong. But you don't need no dog. Um, and it's another one where they put the cover. Really cool. You get that uh, cool little slip cover thing, and you get the original cover art on the inside. I don't remember anything about this movie. It's a Rudger Hauer movie. I kind of like Rudger Hauer. He's kind of cool. He was cool back in the day. And what I get from it, it's a blind detective fighter type guy doing something or whatever. I don't know. Action, comedy type thing. But, I mean, look at look at the cover. I mean, you had to buy it for just for, for the cover alone. Blind, blind, blind Fury. I mean, just for the cover. Blind guy that fights people. I haven't watched it yet. I'm looking forward to seeing it. All right. Now, these two I have watched. And one of them, very confused. The other one, I was like, why did I buy this? Well, I know I bought it, but I was, in general, I was like, Whoa. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's start with the first one. This is another Mill Creek, and it is called... I know I bought this one because it was Mill Creek's, and it's a John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd film, which I absolutely love. John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, and I had to get this title um, because I own everything by John Belushi. Dan Aykroyd's kind of scattered about because he does a lot of stuff where he does a lot of cameo things and small roles, so it's tough to get those things. But because John Belushi passed and you know he he only had a certain amount of movies, I tried to get everything that I could from from John Belushi, and he was like one of my favorite actors. Love the Blues Brothers, uh, nineteen forty one. Um, and, um, uh, wow, Animal House, of course, and he did, uh, Continental Divide, which I have not watched that yet, after all these years, I have still not watched that, that's one of his, I think, drama type, drama, drama, drama type movies, and I have been putting that one off, because it's, I don't know, I, sometimes when comedians go from comedy to drama, it kind of confuses me or brings me to another level with them where I'm kind of like, you should have stayed doing comedy. Like like Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey was like, he was hilarious. Real funny, funny, funny. I mean, Living Color, uh, the Ace Ventura movies, uh, the, the Mask. I mean, great, great, great movies. Then he started doing like these drama movies. And, and even though he's a great actor and, and uh, Man in the Moon was great, um, I prefer to see him in comedies. And I know that maybe as an actor, you kind of like, maybe uh, you don't want to be stuck in that, that just, I'm um, just a comedy actor. I want to be a a bigger actor, kind of like uh, Robin Williams did a great job, uh, like going from comedy to drama, back to comedy, back to drama, you know, uh, I never saw a Robin Williams action movie, but um, some comedians decide to go that route too, they decide I'm gonna be an, I'm gonna be a, an action star now or whatever, um, but who could I use for an example for that action star, um, maybe Chris... Why am I going to say Chris Rock? I was going to say Chris Rock. Chris Rock doesn't do any... Uh, Chris Tucker? I don't know. Anyway, but sometimes they do that. You know, uh, Kevin Hart, he's done action movies with The Rock, you know what I mean? But there's still comedy action movies, but there's some of them that just go full-blown action. Um, so, John Belushi is one of those that I, I love him as a comedian. I loved him on Saturday Night Live. And I'm kind of a little bit worried that if I watch Continental Divide, it's going to bring me to, like, this other level with him. Because this movie was odd okay very very odd it's called neighbors i don't know if i said that at the beginning neighbors with uh john belushi and dan Aykroyd. and dan Aykroyd, um he's got contact lenses in this thing like these blue contact lenses which kind of sets you off he's got blonde hair blue contact lenses 
And it's about these neighbors and um, these people move in next door and they're just odd. It's it's like, and I watched the whole movie and I was kind of in my head, I'm like, this, it should, it should have an ending where like the neighbors that moved in were like from out of space. I mean, cause I saw some, they, they were doing like weird stuff and it was like, like, okay, so, so, so not to, to ruin anything, they're in the house, the, the, the regular people that live there and then the neighbors move in and all of a sudden the wife is in the house. How did she get in the house? I don't know, but I guess breaking and entering doesn't really come into play in this type of movie because then later on, uh, Dan Aykroyd character, the husband, is in the house and he's talking to the wife and then the wife is talking to the husband and I'm, I'm, I know you're confused because I was confused myself and it didn't go anywhere. It, like, it was like, the whole thing was set in this house, in the neighbor's house and was it supposed to be funny? Was it supposed to be a... A sci-fi was it supposed to be a drama? Cause the 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 wife and husband relationship before the neighbors moved in was kind of sad. They weren't really talking to each other, and then these people come in, and, and it's like and like Dan Aykroyd wasn't even like this potty guy. It wasn't a it wasn't like a potty family just moved in, and, and he's trying to convert the the original family over to this like crazy potty type thing. It was it was just odd. It was I I tell you, I mean, it's worth a watch. Okay, it's worth a watch only because you're gonna be like. I'm intrigued and confused in a good way. And, and would I watch it again? Yes, I'd watch it again because I think that I might have missed something with the plot line in this thing. I, I might have missed something that, that I should have caught on to. And I, I just don't feel like I caught on to it. it. It was... But it did keep me glued to the screen. There wasn't really a scene that I was like, oh, you know, I, I feel like hitting the, the stop button. I feel like not putting this on anymore. I don't feel like finishing this. You know, because there have been movies where I'm like, okay... Just so I can say I watched that, I'll put it in fast forward. I'll literally watch the movie from, from the middle of the movie into fast forward all the way to the end. So I can be like, okay, I saw the beginning, I saw the middle, I saw the end. And now I can talk about the movie. And I got a pretty good grasp concept to tell you that this was not a good movie. This wasn't. I, I put it in. And it's got the original art inside. Let me see here. Of course, it should. Here we go. Is the original art inside. And it's got this really cool thing in the back. Well, it's the same thing as the one there. But, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, as far as... John Belushi movies go, I would say it's probably one of the top. I think he's only got six movies. I would put it at maybe five out of the six because I only because I haven't seen Continental Divide, and is no way is it next to the other movies that he's done. But um, very confusing, very confused about this movie. I mean, even to give you a review, I bet you if you watched it and tried to review it. And tried to explain what you just saw. I know. I, I would love for people to watch it. I mean, it's uh, you can find it at Walmart. You can find it at um, uh, uh, Best Buy. Okay, it's like eight ninety nine. That's that's what that's what these Mill Creeks usually go for, like eight ninety nine. I bought mine off of uh, Amazon. Came in the mail, and I please, I please, I please, I please, I I believe I paid eight ninety nine for it. Also, it was worth eight ninety nine. It's worth watching it to be. It's rated R, and that's another thing. I mean, it has these, like, couple of scenes where the wife is kind of hitting on the husband, and the husband's hitting on the... It's, it's going back and forth, and... The, and but uh, as far as language, not, not I can't remember any bad language. I can't remember any, like... I mean, there's a scene where, where the girl, I think, drops her uh, her uh, uh, blanket or whatever, but all you see is her back. I mean, I don't, I don't... Maybe this was, like, one of those rated R movies that back in, like, the 80s... You know, the rated hours a little bit more... Like, nowadays, you can put on uh, Channel 6 or Channel 10 or Channel 12 and find a movie that... A TV show or a movie that should be rated R. I, the, the way the world's gone, it's just changed. It's weird. I mean, I mean, uh, I remember when Howard Stern, they were all over him for the language and everything. And now, you put on Channel 6, like, on a Sunday. And the shows that they're, they're showing you is just sex, violence, murder, language... It's disgusting, and then they wonder why kids are all messed up nowadays. I I don't know. It's like how can you keep them away from the regular TV? You know, th this is a video. I mean, I have to I have to physically get up and put this video in, but it's probably streaming and what. It's e so easy for them to just press play, but um, I don't think this deserved the rated R. This is easily uh, PG thirteen tops, uh, and even that I think I'm pushing it as compared to today's standards of what rated R is and what PG thirteen is or what. To me, nowadays, 
Uh, PG would be a PG-13. Uh, PG-13 would be a rated R. And rated R could be close to NR-17 or X nowadays, the way that they, they do things. I've seen some really bad rated R movies where I'm like, wow, they, they really don't care anymore. The standards are just gone. But anyway, so this movie, yeah, you not don't watch it with the kids because there might be something that uh, I might have missed that could have been, I don't know, inappropriate. Uh, and if it's rated R, I don't rec recommend you watching it with the kids unless you watch it first anyway. And if you're going to watch a rated R movie with your kids, sit down and watch it with your kids. You know what I mean? So if there's something that you need to fast forward or something that you need to explain to your kids, I mean, I'm not opposed to parents watching rated R movies with their kids if they're a certain age. But watch them with your kids. Don't just grab them, put them in, and then walk away. I mean, explain to your kids what is going on. Yeah, that's that's my thing. I mean, you want you want to watch a rated R movie? You sit down. Even these action movies, the Spider Man, Superman's, all these other stuff like that. Some of them are a little bit over the top. Kids don't understand. You know what I mean you know you don't you need your son or daughter, you know, jumping off a building thinking that they're Superman. Explain to your kids that this that this doesn't really happen. You know what I mean? Take a little time. That's all I'm trying to say. Take a little time. I'm not trying to be preachy, but you know, you're gonna watch this stuff with your kids. Take a little time. Uh, but this movie worth a watch. Uh, Neighbors. That's all I got to say about that, I guess. It was, it was, um, it was different. It was definitely nothing like I've ever seen before. And, uh, I just don't understand. I mean, I, I, I could literally feel, I literally feel like both the actors, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi, like maybe mid through this movie were, were I mean, if I was acting in it and I thought about acting in it, you know, I, I think mid movie, I'd be like, where is this going? I mean, did they even read the script is the question. To, to, to me, I mean, because this doesn't seem like anything that they would have signed up for. I mean, it just seems very... I mean, I hope... I don't know if Dan Aykroyd produced it. Did he produce it or write it? So I know I know he's big into these... Getting all caught up into different things and everything. And, and I love both of these guys as an actor. And I thought this movie was decent. But I, I just don't don't understand. It was very... I mean, it should have had a twist at the end. They should have been aliens or something. I don't know, something. Anyway. Neighbors. Pick it up. Last movie I want to talk about today. Okay, so... There's a movie called uh, Class of 1984. Uh, it starred, um, well, it didn't star star, but it was like one of uh, Michael J. Fox's earlier appearances. This movie was decent. That movie was like a, uh, you know, uh, school in like a tough part of town and, and the kids are all troublemakers and there's always problems going on and there's all kinds of stuff happening. And that was decent. I mean, I watched the whole thing from beginning to end. I was like, I was roped in, you know, uh, uh, there's gangs and and the gangs are doing this and the teachers got to fight the gangs and the gangs uh, 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 picking on the 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 kids that have issues and there's things going on and it, it, there was a lot going on with that movie and it was decent it was it was one of those '80s movies that was like um, easy to to get roped into and then you're like oh you know what's gonna happen next you know what I mean that was 1984 but then came 1999 now I, I this was part of my uh, You Got Mail pickup stay from the other day. And I was like, okay, well, I told I, it was actually yesterday. It was yesterday. And I said that I was going to sit down last night and I said I was going to watch this thing. I put this in and it's a restaurant video, uh, class of 1999. Um, I checked to see if it was a sequel to 1984. I think it was from the same, it's from the same people that made 1984. And then later on they did 1999. And then there's actually a 1999 part two. Why? I have no idea. But... Uh, I put this in, I'm like, okay, well, it's about the school, and supposedly the whole um, district is surrounded by, uh, like, the cops won't go in there. It's such a bad area that it's just surrounded by, like, this, this gated area, and, and, like, they send in these robotic teachers to teach the class, with, but it's run by this one mad scientist type guy who's controlling and working with these crazy teachers that are robotic teachers that are, you know, it, these android teachers. And they're kind of abusing the kids. They're, like, the kids are already troublemakers. They, they've been incarcerated. They're, they're in gangs. There's, there's, they got guns. They have drugs. There's all that stuff going on. So, so yes, the kids should be set straight. But then they throw in these robotic uh, teachers and it was just okay it was a sci-fi action drama uh, 
futuristic. They 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 put it as like Mad Max at school. That's that's what that's what the, I think the commercial or what the, somebody I was watching review it. Mad Max in school. So who doesn't love Mad Max? You know, uh, all those Mad Max movies are absolutely great. And then you throw them in school, and you're like, wow, you know, Mad Max in school. But then they 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 put a little Terminator in there. You know, what I mean, so now you got these Terminator teachers in the Mad Max apocalyptic school. And now the teachers are turning on the students, and now the students have to turn on the teachers in order to, to. And I'll tell you, the um, characters in this thing were. Conf I was confused. I want to say one of the girls in it was from. And I don't know if it says it over here. I'm gonna check. I want to say she was from like Mr. Belvedere, or uh, Alf. It was the girl from either one of those shows. And I, I get both of them confused. It doesn't. Does it say anywhere in here? It does. It has Malcolm McDonald in it. Uh, Malcolm McDonald. Malcolm. Ah, whoa. Malcolm McDowell. Okay. Clockwork Orange guy. Okay. So you know, it's like I expected it to be like something, something big. You know, and 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 so and I mean, I didn't know he was in it, but then I put it in, and I'm like, well, it's Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell movies are great, but this must have been Malcolm McDowell. Like I just got done with Clockwork Orange. I just got done with uh, uh, it was it is is is, if, if. I'll go through. I'll put it over here so you know what I'm talking about. But he he just got done doing those kind of movies, and and he was known for for the, these great movies, and and uh, and, and he's in this, and I'm like, okay. And I was just confused, but it's like. The, the cast is... There was another guy from Remo Williams' Adventure Begins, if anybody even remembers what that movie is. I'm going to do a review on that eventually. Um, and uh, that Keech... It's Keech? Keech? Am I saying it right? Stacy Keech. Stacy Keech, which was the cop from all of the uh, Cheech and Chong movies. And he was in Body Bags from uh, John Carpenter. I, uh... I don't know. I, I, I watched it, and I lost interest. And then I gained interest, and then I lost interest again, and then I shut it off. I didn't watch the end. I did not finish it. I put it on last night. It was late. I, tr I tried to push myself through it just for you guys. I was like, I'm going to review this movie. I'm going to watch it right to the end. I'm going to push it. But I, I, And there was a kid in it, too. And I don't know who the kid is, but he's just odd. It was odd. It, it was odd. It was just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to, how to, how to describe it. If you guys have seen this movie, comment below. Tell, tell me what you think. Actually, any of the stuff that I've talked about today, please comment below. And let's start a little conversation going. Because I so, some movies I want to I wanna really, really like. And I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. You know, that, that, you know this is a good movie. This, this might be somebody's absolute favorite movie. So you might be like, what are you, crazy? 1999, that's like the best. Class of 1999, that's the best movie ever. Neighbors, best movie ever. Blind Furry, what do you mean you never see that? That's like the best movie ever. Like Father Like Son, I agree. That was a great movie. But then... Some you know, it's, I, I sometimes I just get really confused because I was like, okay, well, I wanted this because nineteen eighty class of nineteen eighty four was good. Adding this onto my collection, class of nineteen ninety nine, and then it had nothing to do with class of nineteen eighty four. It wasn't like a gang, just a gang movie. It was a futuristic gang movie. And what's even funnier is you know now that we're in twenty twenty one, you know it's like. This never even happened. None, none of this even happened. So you kind of like, oh, well. You know, when I, when I picked this thing up, class of 1999, I was expecting Prince to start singing. Tonight, we're going to party till it's 1999. There's no parties going on in this movie. Everybody's just angry and, you know, doing drugs and guns and jail. And there was no no parties going on here. It was, it, the acting was not good. You know, it was like, it, it was just seemed like a real low budget movie. And it probably wasn't for the time. It was probably a high budget movie. It was, this was probably in the theaters. I don't remember it, you know. I don't remember being in the theaters, but but maybe it was it was one of those I didn't care to see because of my age and I was probably a lot younger. I was probably looking forward to seeing probably E.T. or something like that or Annie, you know. But I I know I just I don't get it. What year did this thing come out? Once again, I'm gonna look at the back of this thing and it's gonna say nothing. Oh, this was in 1990. 1990, this came out. So that means. That, Okay, well, I'll tell you, for 1990, the special effects in this thing was terrible. You know, this this was, I would put this as a low-budget movie. If this came out in 1990, yeah, there was nothing out of the ordinary ex exceptional. I mean, I understand that that was probably pre-CGI, and they're probably still doing the practical effects and everything, but, but I mean, 
they could have got Tom Savini or something from uh, Friday the 13th and all those other great movies to do some kind of special effects. I hope, he, I hope he didn't do that. I hope he didn't do the special effects on this. And I just said, you know, it was just, uh, I don't know. Uh, should I say waste of time? I'm going to put it in. I'm going to finish watching it just because I can put it in my, my banks of things that I, I've accomplished in life, you know, but class of 1999. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So that is the end of my pickups for today. I hope you enjoyed. Please hit that subscribe button and I will see you later. <laughs>